Gawant insisting that the terror group's Gaza leader, Yahya Sinwar, is now on the run. He is not in touch with his fighters and is having to flee from one hideout to another. I do want to talk about that and the other headlines coming in from the war here. So let's bring in Enya Praveen, the senior director of the Israel program at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies, joining us now live to discuss. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us today to break it all down. Thanks, Josh. It's great to be here. Of course. Well, first off, I just want to get your take, your thoughts here on that comment from the defense minister saying that half of Hamas fighters have now been taken out. Is that something that seemed possible, especially this quickly in? We're talking about four months into the war. Yeah, so those numbers are impressive. And I think it always is helpful to review Israel's number one and number two goals of this war. Number one was to defeat and dismantle Hamas. And number two was to return the hostages. So if you look at this campaign, which began in the north of Gaza and the IDF is working its way south, it has made very impressive um, achievements with a relatively low casualty rate on the IDF side. However, um, part of its uh, achievement was to move over a million civilians from north and central Gaza into southern Gaza. So right now you have a situation where the last holdout of, um, of Hamas is in a town called Rafah, which is right on the Egyptian border. And there are over a million um, additional civilians there who have been displaced from other parts of Gaza. So although the IDF has made very impressive gains, taking out um, the vast majority of Hamas battalions, there are still Hamas battalions left and they are embedded deep among the civilian population in Rafa. So impressive gains, but a long way to go. And I want to talk a little bit more about a possible ceasefire deal as Hamas says it's only going to accept a permanent ceasefire and IDF troops leaving Gaza in exchange for the release of all of those remaining hostages. Is that really a possibility? Is that realistic at this point? The short answer is no. Um, the, Hamas has one goal at this point. You talked about Yahya Sinwar. I mean, he is the de facto uh, leader of Hamas on the ground right now. And I believe, as others do, that he is the ultimate decision maker. He has one goal, and that is to walk away from this conflict and be able to point to a victory, to some sort of Hamas gain. And as I said earlier, the Israeli number one goal is to defeat Hamas, which means eliminating Yahya Sinwar and taking Yahya and other le Hamas leaders like him, who are all in hiding right now in, in Gaza, off of the chessboard, eliminating them, arresting them, wounding them, killing them, getting them out of the fight. So these two, um, I don't see a hostage deal coming out where either side gets everything that they're looking for. Israel wants all of the hostages back. This has been a sticking point on the Israeli side of the negotiations. And Hamas wants a permanent ceasefire that allows them to walk away. So uh, the, the negotiations are ongoing. I'm hoping that as as you know, as good people around the world are, that something, some sort of a deal is reached that allows Israel to bring hostages home. But I don't think that either side gets all, everything that they're asking for here. I don't think there's a way for Israel to negotiate for the return of all the hostages without allowing Hamas to survive, which is what they're looking to do in this negotiation. And it also sounds like Hamas is pushing for the release of top terrorists behind some of the biggest terror attacks that happened there in Israel during the second intifada. Will Israel allow that to happen? As you mentioned, not everyone is going to be able to get everything that they do want here. So, you know, I can't speak to what Israel will do. Israel's made tough decisions in the past. Um, just recently, in the in the last round of hostage exchanges, Israel released prisoners with blood on their hands. I can say that um, Hamas's demands are not only to release prisoners who um, were guilty of terrorism in the Second Intifada and in the years um, in previous years, but also Hamas uh, warriors that came into Israel and and massacred and looted and mutilated and burned and burn families alive. And they're also asking that these Hamas fighters be released in the deal. So, you know, again, Israel's willing to make tough con uh, concessions in order to get 
civilians back. But it is very fraught in Israel because, as you know, Josh, um, in when in the previous the sort of the the, the biggest uh, prisoner exchange that Israel has made with Hamas, it released over a thousand prisoners for one soldier, Gilad Shalit. And among those prisoners that were released was Yahya Sinwar, the architect of October 7th, the October 7th massacres and atrocities. So it, I don't know what the ultimate deal will be, but I can tell you that it's a fraught decision. There's also been a lot of questions about whether there's been any proof that those medications that were um, supposedly sent over to the hostages that were being held in Gaza actually made it. What is your understanding of what happened? Does that proof exist from what you've seen? There's, as of this morning, there's no proof that the medications arrived to the hostages. Um, I saw reports that said that France was looking into it and that the Qataris are also looking into it. The Qataris brokered this deal which in which um, more aid was sent into Gaza in exchange for this medicine to arrive to the hostages. So it was a deal that was brokered by the Qataris. And now, really, the Qataris are on the hook. I mean, the Qataris are facing a PR debacle right now. This is a this is a, a an Arab regime that has supported Hamas. They're Hamas's number one patron that have, that they are ideologically compatible with Hamas. They have both both of their leaderships come from the offshoot of the Muslim Brotherhood and Qatar is now uh, you know, watching the events unfold in Gaza and trying to play a constructive role, right? They're trying to they're trying to demonstrate the international community that they can actually be helpful here. And one of the one of their PR stunts was to try and and get this medication to the hostages who have been for over a hundred days without the some life saving medication. So uh, the Qataris, I'm sure, are keen to get some sort of win out of that. I'm sure they'll be pushing. But the question is, is how much leverage do they even have over Hamas? Anymore? Anymore. My last question for you here. Egypt has reportedly threatened to suspend its peace treaty with Israel if, quote, even one Gaza civilian is evacuated to Egypt. Is that a real possibility? What would be the implications of suspending that peace treaty between Egypt and Israel? So I think this is part of the heated uh, exchange of rhetoric that's been going on between Israel and Egypt recently. But there's also a lot of cooperation that's going on both um, above board and behind the scenes. Um, Egypt and Israel are security par partners. It's not what I would characterize as a warm peace, but it's a, a stable peace. And both countries' security depend on it. So I don't think there's a real possibility of, Israel, of Egypt walking away from the peace treaty. But I do think it reflects the tension between the, um, between Israel's war goals and in what Egyptians perceive as their security needs on that border with Gaza. Um, Egyptians do not want to see a flood of Gazans coming in to Egypt. They understand that that would mean um, ultimately Hamas terrorists coming into their country. The, the Egyptian territory that abuts Gaza is the Sinai Peninsula. It's a huge tourist destination. It's a region that's seen, that's seen unfortunately, um, instability from its own breed of Islamist terrorism. Egypt worked very hard, often in coordination with Israel, to pacify that region and bring make it safe again so that tourism could return. So I think that it, Egypt definitely has skin in this game. It's very sensitive to what's going on in Gaza, especially right on its border in southern Gaza, but ultimately, um, in order to um, bring back security and stability to that region, Egypt is going to have to be a partner to the Israel, just as they have been in, in prior decades. All right. Enya Kravine, thank you so much, as always, for taking the time to join us here. Anything else you want to add before I let you go? Um, thanks so much, Josh. I mean, one thing that's super interesting, it's a story I'm following, but um, as the IDF is fighting in southern Gaza, they're seeing more and more signs that, that Yahya Sinwar is moving around from underground hideout to underground hideout. So I think that the IDF is closing in on Yahya Sinwar. I think the hostage negotiations are moving along. But as the IDF gets closer and narrows down where the Hamas leadership are hiding and where the, and where the hostages are and is able to carry out this operation and, and zoom in and do what it needs to do, um, the, the need for the hostage negotiations hopefully will be ameliorated and Israel might be able to solve, it, solve this without making the huge concessions that Hamas is demanding. Yeah, it definitely sounds like they're hot on his trail, so to speak. So we'll keep an eye on that and keep everyone updated at home. And yeah, thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us today. We appreciate it. Thank you so much, Josh.